and gentlemen, let me welcome each one of you to this press conference. With me on the dais are Mr. Atanu Chakrabarti, who is the chairman of HDFC Bank, Mr. Shashi Jagdishan, the CEO of HDFC Bank, and my colleague Keki Mistri, vice chairman and CEO of HDFC Limited. I was a little disappointed at the press intelligence <laughs> that no, no members of the press could decipher this because it's always you are one day ahead. Tomorrow's news you are supposed to give today. And I was disappointed you that uh, you failed this time. <laughs> but we tried our best. The work was going on for the last three weeks and we tried our best to keep the number of people involved limited and strict no talking. Anyway, the board of directors of HDFC Limited and the board of directors of HDFC Bank at their respective meetings held today have approved an all stock amalgamation of HDFC with HDFC Bank. The amalgamation is subject to the approval of shareholders of HDFC and HDFC Bank respectively. RBI, stock exchanges, SEBI and such other regulatory approvals as may be required for approving this merger. Only upon appro uh, obtaining all approvals with when the merger be will become effective. HDFC will merge with HDFC Bank. Shareholders of HDFC will receive shares of HDFC Bank in exchange of the share in HDFC at the approved share exchange ratio. Mansi Mehta and Company and Deloitte Stoosh appointed by HDFC and bank respectively have recommended a share exchange ratio which has been accepted by the respective boards. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Securities and Morgan Stanley provided the fairness opinion on the share exchange ratio both to HDFC and HDFC bank respectively. Accordingly, shareholders of HDFC Limited will receive 42 shares of the bank for 25 shares held in HDFC Limited. The shares held by HDFC Limited in the bank will be cancelled. Post-closing, HDFC Bank will be 100% owned by public shareholders and existing shareholders of HDFC Limited will own about 40% of the bank. So there won't be any promoter left in the HDFC Bank, it will be all, all in the market. As today, HDFC has no promoters and the entire shareholding is in the, listed in the market and can be traded. Similarly, HDFC Bank now, earlier we had 21% of the shares, now it will all be in the market. Both of us have been evaluating the pros and cons of a possible merger for mutual benefit of both institutions. The merger is coming together of equals. Customers of both HDFC and the bank will be the biggest beneficiaries. However, over the last few years, there have been certain regulatory changes for banks and NBFCs, which have considerably reduced the barriers for a potential merger. The last three years has seen a host of guidelines issued by RBI on harmonizing the regulation between banks and NBFCs. These have included Guidelines such as large NBFCs should be converted into commercial banks, particularly those over 50,000 crore asset base. NPA classification, which was different before Reserve Bank has now made the same NPA classification for NBFCs, housing finance and banks. <clears throat> the Reserve Bank has now required, we are required under the Reserve Bank regulation to provide liquidity coverage ratio. That means in NBFCs need to maintain liquidity against the next 30 days outflow on a rolling basis. Scale-based regulation for NBFCs have been introduced by RBI, where we would be recognized as a large organization in the upper layer of NBFCs. And the upper layer of NBFCs will have 
a much closer and stricter regulatory requirement. Another factor is core financial solution system. RBI has asked the NBFCs to follow a core financial solutions uh, like the bank which is following core banking system and risk-based internal audit. These measures have considerably reduced the regulatory arbitrage which was there between a bank and an NBFC. The strategic rationale for the proposed merger is as follows. The reduced gap in liquidity requirements between a bank and an NBFC. The SLR and CRR for banks was 27%, which has now been reduced to 22%. 18% for SLR and 4% for CRR. Interest rates are more favorable today as compared to earlier years. Banks have an option to invest in priority sector lending certificates to meet the PSL requirements as against direct lending to agriculture and MSME as in the past. With RERA and IBC, real estate is seeing an increased level of transparency. And mortgage customers have, can have access to a range of financial products under one roof now. Change is inevitable. But change is beneficial, change is welcome when it is beneficial to all the stakeholders. So the merger makes the combined entity strong enough not only to counter competition, but make the mortgage offering even more competitive. We will be able to offer all the variations in the mortgage product, which currently as HDFC standalone, we are unable to offer, such as an overdraft product. The funding challenges both in quantum and cost will be minimized by the combined entity. The merger will therefore capitalize on our domain knowledge in real estate and mortgages as well as our operational efficiencies in processing mortgages whilst leveraging the cost of funds efficiency and the wide distribution network of the bank. So the transaction involves the amalgamation of HDFC and two of its wholly owned subsidiaries, HDFC Holdings and HDFC Investments with HDFC Bank. HDFC Limited is the promoter of HDFC Bank and together with its two subsidiaries currently holds 21% of the share capital of the bank. Post completion of the merger, all the subsidiaries and associate companies of HDFC Limited will be owned by HDFC Bank, subject to regulatory approvals. As on April 1, 22, the market capitalization of the bank was 8.3 lakh, 360 lakh crores, which is 110 billion, and HDFC was 4.46 lakh crores, which is 59 billion. Asset size of the bank today is 18.4 lakh crores, and on a consolidated basis, HDFC is 8.8 lakh crores. Bank has 6,300 banking outlets and 17,000 ATMs. HDFC has 651 offices, inclusive of 206 outlets of HDFC sales. The bank has requested Reserve Bank for phased-in approach in respect of SLR and CRR. <coughs> priority sector lending, as well as grandfathering of certain assets and liabilities and in respect of some of its subsidiaries. These, rec uh, these requests are under consideration by RBI in terms of their letter to the bank dated 1st April 2022. In the past, the merger would not have been as value creative as present. The merger will lead to significant synergies of combined entity and a better return to shareholders. The combined strength of the balance sheet of the combined entity will be the ability to compete on not only on the funding side and the ability to offer the entire range of mortgage products, which is a min-win situation for both institutions. As the bank does not do loan origination, they originate and we distribute, we place and they, so this will be a new product, it's an addition of a bank activity. So the benefits are lower cost of funds will be made available for mortgage business. The merger will mitigate the single product risk 
while at the same time enhance the diversity of assets of the combined entity. <coughs> Under the bank structure, the features of the mortgage product can be enhanced in terms of product design. <coughs> I don't know what's happened. The combined entity will be in a position to offer the mortgage product seamlessly as under the, under the current arrangement between HDFC and HDFC Bank, where the bank sources mortgages and acquires a predetermined percentage of the loans sourced through the assignment route. Infusion of capital in the bank will no longer be a drag on ROE of the mortgage business. Subject to RBI and other regulatory approvals, material subsidiaries and associate companies of HDFC Limited will continue to be owned by HDFC Bank. This will facilitate more efficient cross-selling of banking and financial service products, including insurance and mutual funds. Value of HDFC will not be depressed by the holding company discount in so far as it relates to the shares of the bank. So the holding company discount, which is huge today, will disappear because 60-70% of the unrealized gain of HDFC were due to our holding in the bank of 21%. So the proposed merger will benefit the economy in more ways than one. A larger balance sheet and a larger capital base will allow greater flow of credit into the economy. It will it'll enable underwriting of larger ticket loans, including infrastructure loans, which is an urgent need of the country. It will be it will enable the delivery of the home loan offering to a large base of over 68 million customers of a bank in a seamless manner and improve the pace of credit growth of the economy. HDFC is a significant provider of home loans to low income group and middle income group segment under the affordable housing initiatives of the government of India under the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana. Access to housing finance for this category would improve further on account of the low cost funds available with HDFC Bank. And a larger balance sheet will also facilitate flow of a larger quantum of credit into the priority sector which includes agriculture. I must say that HDFC will continue to operate as an independent entity on as is where is basis until the effective date. Until the, all the approvals are received, we will continue as two separate entities with no overlap and no cross holdings, continue as it is. Because so this is a requirement of one of the regulatory uh, concerns that we have. Post the effective date, all HDFC branches, all HDFC offices in India will be retained and mortgages will continue to be offered from these outlets. Over a period of time, these branches will be converted to full service banking licenses wherever possible. And, and so it does not affect any of our employees. Because it's a, it's a new product for HDFC Bank, which they are not doing, it is complementary and it, there is no duplication in, in, in our activities today. As a result, the bank will require each and every employee of HDFC who are doing in the operations department who are churning out loans. Like we said, we had a massive lo loan inflow of about 86,000 individual applications in the month of March. So, so you know, what, what, what I want to end by saying that after 45 years in housing finance, after providing 9 million homes to Indians, we have to find a home for ourselves. And we have found a home in our own family company, HDFC Bank. Uh, one disclaimer I would like to urge the TV channels that I'm in no fit condition today to do a one-on-one -on -one interview because we had two sleepless nights. But um, I'll, I'll be happy to do it separately because there are seven TV channels you have requested. I don't have the stamina today to talk to seven channels. So please excuse me for a one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you. I'll request Mr. Atanu Chakrabarti to say a few words. Open up to question and answers. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, 
Mr. Parekh has very aptly and in a very concise fashion brought together the complexities of otherwise a uh, deal of this millennium for the country's economic history uh, in a very short and uh, pithy fashion. Uh, today is a historic day. It's uh, two institutions which are coming together, which are steeped in tradition of product and market leadership, deep customer understanding, delivering consistent return over the years, and impeccable uh, corporate governance track record. And in a sense, uh, you know, uh, it has been uh, a growing up of a uh, child which was a prodigy, which has matured and uh, now also taking the parent along. So it's, it's uh, in a sense, uh, as uh, poisoned for uh, the bank as it is for HDFC Limited. And uh, I'm really grateful to the entire leadership over all these years of both the organizations which have brought up these organizations to this past that they are uh, turned out to be a real big engines of growth for the country. Companies do tend to come together, however, uh, after two years of, uh, you know, the pandemic that uh, the economies have been buffeted with, people had their personal tragedies, uh, the timing that uh, trans this transaction couldn't have come at a better time. Indian economy is now poised to grow. You all know the numbers. I need not reiterate it over next many years. And banking industry is well positioned with, uh, to make it grow. And these two organizations, when they come together, the big balance sheet that they bring in will also bring in a huge credit growth needed for the economic development of the country. And that's where actually the rationale of the entire deal derives itself. It is further predicated on the reforms that have taken over last few years, which in Toralia include the GST, RERA, provision of specially RERA and GST, and infrastructure status to affordable housing, which really make them uh, sort of extremely credit worthy, budgetary incentives for affordable housing, and many other, other policy incentives. And over the last few years, you have also seen uh, and observed increased housing demand in tier two and tier three cities. And as the housing sector is very strongly coming into being again after a few years of being in a sort of uh, platitude uh, growth, one is looking at a multi-year growth path. The mortgage contribution, I'll just give you a number, uh, of the country to the norm nominal GDP is at about 11%. China stands at 20 plus and developing economies are close to 40. Now you see the gap and you see these balance sheets. I need not tell more about it as to how uh, this gap is going to be fulfilled by these two balance sheets and uh, bring the growth not only for the economy as well as for the combined entity that will uh, come into being. Uh, as uh, Mr. Parekh had alluded to, the NBFC's regulatory trajectory had been coming closer to the banks. That makes this deal that much easier in terms of the overall risk requirements that the regulator puts in for the financial institutions. To that extent, the requirement of CRR, SLR, and other various requirements, which have been converging over the past few years and now come fairly close to each other. Of course, there are differentials which need to be phased in. Over the last six years, the bank has grown its book well with lower cost of funds and some of the costs associated with merger like maintenance of statutory reserves on the merge entity has also come down. This along with the fact that affordable housing also qualifies for the PSL makes the merger value extremely accretive and uh, attractive for uh, both the organizations. The key subsidiaries of HDFC Limited, which are likely to be the uh, subsidiaries of the combined entity, uh, have built in resilience and uh, to also take external capital support wherever possible. To that extent, they are very strong in themselves and their balance sheets are equally powerful. And they are in, in turn also add a lot of value to the combined entity. The bank can now leverage its entire branch network, it will also be able to offer 
the entire bouquet of services to the HDFC limited customers, which are considerable in number, and also complete wherever required the gap for 6.8 crores uh, customers of HDFC banks, especially with respect to the housing loan products. So that put together uh, shows uh, the large market that gets created on account of these two entities coming together. And of course, uh, the possibility of leveraging the long tenor home loans to cross sell other banking product and also make the books of the bank very stable, um, a stable book for any uh, financial institution. Uh, I need not reiterate, it's always something one looks forward to. The coming together of distribution and customer leadership of HDFC Bank and the product and market leadership of HDFC Limited in the housing loan product, which is absolutely first rate, is, let me reiterate the uh, things which earlier on uh, Mr. Parekh had mentioned, as extremely value cre uh, creative. And the skills are complementary in nature and they are coming together only enhances the value that could be delivered to the customers. Needless to say, uh, the post-merger, the combined entity would continue to meet all the regulatory, incremental regulatory requirement on uh, the regular basis that it has been doing till now. For the economy, its benefits, uh, as I've been outlined before, are naturally a large credit flow. Also, uh, looking at the affordable housing, which is a big need for the population which is seeking shelter and wants it at a certain cost, uh, that itself gets met and also further provides impetus to Housing for All initiative of the government by leveraging the low cost fund uh, of which bank has a very strong base. In turn, uh, the bank would be able to offer the full banking services on the liability side, the deposit, etc., to the customers of uh, HDFC Limited itself. Uh, there are three things which normally be look, one would be looking at in such a merger of this size, which are essentially the culture, the systems, and the people. Uh, culture, one on the business side, as I've just mentioned, and uh, in detail, Mr. Parekh had explained to all of you regarding the business leadership. The other side is the assurance function, which is very critical for everybody to have that confidence that the combined entity would be able to stand and withstand any economic uh, setbacks that occur in any cyclical economy. And those assurance function basically allude to the compliances, the risk culture, uh, and the auditing mechanism which has to be risk driven. Uh, both these organizations are extremely compliant as they are known as conservative, uh, which is very important. Uh, to that extent, both the organizations tend to be a bit boring but that's how it ought to be. It protects, keeps your money safe. And the second element of the systems is technology. And luckily, both the institutions have been, have embarked on a very large technology revamp. And uh, both the technologies and the system of both the organization would, would be easily able to talk to each other and bring together, uh, bringing them together would not be uh, very difficult. In a sense, if you look at the back, there are no round circles. There are square and square. So there is no square peg or no round peg in a square hole. They're just two squares, so they will come together well. The other part is uh, the people. Uh, again, because of the complementary nature of the skill set that is needed, almost everybody from HDFC Limited would be required to be into the combined entity, as well as the growth opportunities of uh, executives of both sides. And for the customer, as uh, I need to reiterate once again, that a very strong, vibrant culture, 
a system which has technology which is taking the lead. Uh, it's, uh, whether it's a use of cloud or it's using of APIs to be talking to various other stakeholders. It, is, uh, it brings to customer a great ease of being able to do business with the combined entity. And lastly, the people. To close, it is just the beginning of perhaps another journey for the combined entity which will come into being after all the relevant regulatory approvals are obtained and considering the fact that both the organizations have been complying with the requirements of uh, the regulatory stipulations all the while that, uh, uh, that would come through uh, in its due course, uh, they would, the combined entity would sort of embark on a trajectory on a growth path uh, which should not only mimic the growth of the country but also pro provide a certain amount of impetus uh, to the growth itself. Thank you. Question answers. but he definitely dodged it. Uh, you know, from here onwards, for the next uh, two years, uh, what is the role that you see uh, for yourself, Mr. Mistri and Mr. Jagdishan in the combined entity once the merger is over? And uh, Mr. Jagdishan, uh, uh, you know, whenever uh, the merger uh, of HDFC and HDFC Bank has spoken in the past, and we have spoken about this at your office as well, uh, you know, it said that this will be more value accretive for HDFC rather than HDFC Bank. Uh, if you can, uh, you know, enumerate, uh, I mean, Mr. Parekh did speak about this at length, but if you can, you know, as the MD and CEO of HDFC Bank enumerate what this holds for you or, or uh, you know, this is just uh, done in a timely fashion to give HDFC a good home. Thank you. No, you first. <laughs> so you asked uh, what will we be doing? First of all, this process will take anywhere between 12 to 18 months because of the numerous approvals we need. Reserve Bank of India rule does not, does not allow anyone above 75 to be on a board of a bank. I have already crossed that age, so there's no way I can be on the board of the bank. So far as KK Mistri is concerned, um, he's 67 years old, it will take a year or so, so he may have a year, year and a half uh, possible to be a director on the board. He will not be a full-time executive, but he doesn't want to be a full-time executive. Not that we don't want him, but he can be a, a director on the board and he can handle the mortgage functions, investor relations, whatever Shashi wants to do with KK. We leave it to them to see. But, um, um, but we'll all be taken care of. You don't think that we'll be thrown out. It's a merger of equals and it's a friendly merger. It's not at all hostile and, uh, and we, are, we are one. As, as Mr. Chakravarti said, as the, as the son grows older, he acquires the father's business. So that's all happening here, nothing more. You're right. Um, say probably six years ago when we did examine this, I acknowledge that at that point in time, both for the institution and for the bank, we did not see the value on a combined basis. It was because of the fact that the regulatory threshold levels was much higher. As he alluded to, the reserves were, requirements were about 27%. You were still a young bank. We did not have uh, the amount of mo deposit mobilization that was happening was just enough to take care of our needs. Three years, the priority sector requirement, the only thing that we did at that point in time was just get into the foray into 
the deeper parts of the country. We still had not sort of really unleashed our product offering of which was catering to the segment in the semi-urban rural parts of the country at that point in time. Six years later, as we speak now, a lot of things have changed. Part of it, I think I'm, I'll be repeating some of the things that he mentioned, some of the things Keiki mentioned uh, in the call this morning, and Mr. Chakrabarti also mentioned, but I'll just try to put it in a capsule. Number one, the interest regime itself has come down dramatically. We used to be around the seven to eight percent six, seven years ago. Now it's around the three to four percent levels. The moment you have a low interest regime, the drag on the reserve requirements, especially on the SLR and the CRR, is no more a drag. Your government security yields in the shorter end maybe about five percent and odd, but in the medium to long term, the long tenor, it's around the six percent. The cost of funds are about three to four percent. It's still a positive drag, even if you take into account the fact that CRR is not going to earn money. But it's not a negative drag; it's a positive drag. So that's number one. On the other aspect of it is on the priority sector. The priority sector, yes, they have a large balance sheet now. Forty percent of that is going to be large. You, and there are sub elements, which is the what we need to meet as uh, uh, small and marginal farmers or the weaker section, because if you don't meet that shortfall, we need to keep it in the Rural Infrastructure Development Fund, where, where there'll be a drag. Now, that's a reality. But there are a lot of things which have changed over the last three, six years. Number one, in the last six years, the bank has learned to unleash its product offering, especially in the micro enterprises sector, over the last six years, and more so in the last two, three years. If you look at the recent numbers which was published last year, the fastest growing engine for the bank is in the microservices segment. And that qualifies for priority sector. Two, if you look at the arrangement that we have with HDFC Limited, we have the ability to distribute HDFC Limited home loan, and we have an option to buy back. However, we, whilst we have grown on a CAGR of about 25% over the last five years on mortgage, we still are a small proportion of where the market is. Our proportion of mortgage in our book is just 11%, as against when you compare with some of the larger private sector and the largest bank in the country, where the proportion is much between 30 and 40%. So, and when you look at it, we have not actually unleashed this product for various reasons into all parts of the bank. We have only few branches which offer these products. When the regulatory approvals do come in, we have an opportunity for us to unleash it in all our distribution points. And our distribution points are not just branches. We are now today 6,300 6, branches. We have a capacity to add more and more branches at the same pace that we've added this year. We've added about 730 branches in a COVID year. We could sort of really ramp it up even in the future. And with this kind of an announcement, we probably may even step it up even further. Because that all sort of helps us to not only de mobilize deposits, but also sort of increase the distribution of loans, especially affordable homes. 50% of our branches are in semi-urban and rural parts of the country. The, their product, which is in the affordable housing, is not something that we have actually penetrated much. The moment you start to launch that, and the moment you start to unveil that and unleash that, it's not, not nothing that I did, but it's the, the institution is amazing. It's, it's a, you know, 25 years of institutionalized processes. The sales execution engine is so good that Come what may, you can't stop that growth engine at all. So we will fulfill our priority sector requirements on a self-fulfilling basis by moving the affordable housing through the rural and distribution network. In addition to that, we have the BC channel, which we have been talking about it from in our earnings call. 
We have more than 15,000 BCs, but we have expanded our partnerships to more five other partners, so the reach will be even more. That will be powering more uh, uh, distribution of such priority sector products. The last but not the least is, unlike six years ago, we, did, we were, if at all there was a shortfall, we had to meet our priority sector either organically or we buy priority sector from outside or we had to invest in the rural infrastructure bonds. That was be that needed funding requirement and more and more reserve requirement also. But now, over the last six years, there's been a very throbbing market on the PSLCs or the certificates, the priority sector lending certificates. It's now reached almost 5.5 lakh crores and it's only going to grow. So um, that's an easy way, maybe expensive because the cost ranges from 0.75% to 2.5%. Uh, it, it will sort of uh, have a bit of an impact on the operating cost, but I think our revenues are reasonably strong enough to absorb that. But you don't need a funding requirement. So a large portion of that, 50% uh, of our requirements can come out of that. And there's an appetite in the market for that. So eventually, this time around, the need to have the, uh, you know, us sweat a lot to get the deposits and reinvest in uh, PSL is not going to be so much. It's going to be an effort. We, we will have a bit of a drag in the initial years, but I believe with the kind of um, expansion that we are doing in branches, the kind of foray that we are going to uh, through our uh, micro and small enterprises, the fact that we have never tested the affordable housing now, which we are going to be unleashing in from all our branches, I think the drag should be much lesser. In fact, it will be accretive because an organic PSL uh, will have a return on assets risk adjusted upwards of 25 to 3%, which is not a drag anymore. Anurag, uh, this side from Z Business, Deepak sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand that the merger of the merger is the most important thing. Cross-selling is the most important thing. Because now, the way the RBI has come to the new harmonization, the other consolidation came to the first time. And, sir, there are many regulators. There will be many regulators in it. So, how confident are you that you will get all the information? Because if we talk about one thing, then you will get all the information. एच डी एफ सी बैंक जो होगा उसमें उसकी हिस्सेदारी 48 परसेंट तक होगी एच डी एफ सी लाइफ में तो आर बी आई के नियम जो है अभी हाल के दिनों में आर बी आई ने मंजूरी नहीं दी है इतनी ज़्यादा हिस्सेदारी तक आर बी आई कहता है कि बैंक जो है इंश्योरेंस कंपनी में बीस तीस परसेंट तक की हिस्सेदारी रखे as we said, we have large number of many regulatory approvals we need. We need the approval of insurance regulator, the pension regulator, SEBI, RBI, uh, CCI, Competition Commission of India, shareholders. So this, all these are, the merger is subject to getting all these approvals. And um, that's the reason we said it'll take about NCLT, it'll take about 15 months, 18 months to get all the regulators. And there is a sequence on which how you can go, what is one, two, three, how do we we'll go. And um, so we are quite hopeful that, um, uh, that we will get approvals from the regulators. Um, we are positive we'll get a, a approval because it's positive for the economy. You need large banks in India. RBI is encouraging NBFCs to become banks. And, uh, and, and, and for the NBFC also, as I mentioned, the arbitrage which was available in the past is getting narrowed and narrowed. So there's very limited uh, advantage of being an NBFC because similar regulations of banking are coming to the NBFC sector, particularly the large NBFC sector. A follow-up to that, Mr. Parikh, actually, would HDFC look to increase its stake uh, in the insurance companies to take it above 50% uh, for the regulator's comfort? Um, and has there been any preliminary discussion with the regulator on whether or not uh, you will have to create this holding company structure once the merger goes through? Uh, and there's a second question after that, sure. 
No, so uh, you are right that RBI rule says either you have above 50 percent or 30 percent and we are I think at 48 or something on our life insurance. So we have taken up the matter with RBI and we have written that item with, uh, to the RBI and we hope to get a reply sometime sooner, uh, you know, permitting us to keep as it, the stake as it is or they may tell us to buy that 1% which we can easily buy in the market to make it compliant to the banking regulation of 50%. But ultimately what we have to do is all the many banks have life insurance and asset management companies. We have to comply with RBI regulations on this. If there is a change, we will accept the change. If the change is there for other banks, we will have to accept the same percentage holdings. So that, that we have confirmed to the Reserve Bank that whatever they do for other banks who own insurance companies, the same will apply to us. Uh, on the capital requirement, sorry, if I may, uh, you know, the additional... The, sorry, on the... Uh, capital requirement, the additional CRR, the additional SLR, I think uh, that is the biggest question for the investors as well. How much will that number be? Uh, could you give us a figure, please? See, what we have uh, in, our letter, uh, in, in our letter to the Reserve Bank of India, we have said two things. One is, please give us time to be compliant on our existing assets of HDFC Limited, a specific period of two to three years. But all new loans will be complied with the SLR-CRR regulations. And... Um, so this is also one of the requests made to our, our RBI to give us time for the PSL because we don't have MSME loans, we don't have agriculture loans in our books. Yes, we have a large amount of affordable housing loans but not of the, these two because there's a grading how much you can have, how much you must have for agri, MSME and affordable in that 40% PSL sector. So. And, and we always, under the LCR, we carry some amount of liquidity ourselves for our re public deposits which we take from the public, retail deposits, we anyway have to provide SLR, uh, we have to have government securities. So we have to work out and see, we have not yet done a number of how much will it be, what will be the shortfall, what will our RBI permit us to do, how long we will get to be totally compliant, grandfathering of our assets and liabilities. So all this is an open question. It depends how RBI uh, responds to our letter. And HDB Financial, may, sorry, HDB may, Financial will continue to be um, an NBFC held by HDFC Bank. Is there any thought on that? Till the effective date, we will be an NBFC in the housing finance sector. After mm. the effective date, the NBFC will disappear, the HFC will disappear, it will all be one. No, this was the HDB Financial. The HDB NB Financial, again, we, it, we will do what RBI tells us to do. At the moment, it is uh, almost 100% owned by the bank. You yes, today it is about 95%. Uh -huh. We would love to have it as a subsidiary, but if the regulatory prescriptions uh, s suggest that we may have to have an alternate uh, thought process, we are happy to do so. So, as far as the trigger point, as you said, is concerned, it's something which has something which we have evaluated over the years. In the past, it did not make sense for a variety of reasons. One is that at that time the CRR SLR requirement was a lot higher than what it is now. Secondly, interest rates today are significantly lower than what they used to be. So, if we have to raise money put in for buying securities or for uh, anything else. Today, the cost of that money will be a lot lesser. And also, the regulations have changed. Regula we, we carry a certain amount of uh, LCR requirements, so we carry liquidity. So, today, the financial cost of a merger is virtually very, very limited. Uh, to my mind, once the merger is done, after the effective date, uh, it should be EPS accretive from day one, from the very first year. And the reason is that 21% of our shareholding in HDFC Bank gets cancelled. So when that, ca that, that gets cancelled, the shares come down, which automatically triggers an increase in the EPS. 
Well, sir, you've been talking sir, about the cross-selling opportunities. When do you th believe they'll start accruing and showing into the numbers as well? It should start accruing and showing in the numbers uh, reasonably quickly. Uh, once the integration, once the uh, uh, effective date uh, sets in, so the way it is envisaged today is that till the effective date, which is the next uh, whatever 15 months, 12 months, 18 months, whatever it takes, till that time the two institutions will operate as the way they are right now on a, on a uh, same basis as now. Once that gets done, then the integration process can be taken up in full force. So should but we cross-selling can start uh, quickly now. Sorry. Sir, this is Joel so Rebello from the Economic Times. So should we expect that in the interim, the growth will be a bit slower can because you give us a chance? the focus will be more on execution of merger going forward? No, no, I don't think there's going to be any challenge in terms of execution of a merger. It's not, it's, that's not going to take time. Uh, to my mind, the ability to cross-sell products, whether it's mortgage products to HDFC bank right. customers, whether it is products of life insurance, general insurance, asset management, to this whole pool of customers of the bank, that will increase significantly. Sir, this so is cross sell opportunities will be higher. Sir, this is Joel Rebello from the Economic Times. I'm sorry, I have to button. Uh, can you see me, sir? Sorry. Sir, uh, you all spoke about the SLR and CRR impact. Is there any calculation you all have done? I have, you, all, you all spoke about the fact that it is lower now, the rates of uh, SLR has come down over the years and that's one reason why this merger makes sense. Is there any calculation you'll have done on what will be the impact? Uh, is there a number you'll can share or anything you'll can tell us about that? Uh, second question is on the interest rates. Uh, you all said that rates are at the lowest uh, or probably at the bottom, but they're only going to go up. And if this merger is going to take 18 months, uh, you know, you all are probably going to be at higher rate when it gets effective. So won't that, you know, negate the advantages that you'll have? Thank you. See, to my mind, interest rates, even though they may go a little higher, are not going to be as high as they used to be in pre-COVID times. So in the past, when we had evaluated uh, the merger, the interest rates in that, in that period of time were significantly higher than what it would be, even after, even if you assume that there are one or two rate hikes in the coming period. See, SLR, CRR depends upon, we've sought some kind of, uh, we've spoken to RBI, we've told them that give us a little time to catch up with the CRR, SLR, PSL requirement. So a lot depends on what, uh, what, are, what kind of uh, uh, response we get from RBI. Uh, Mr. Jagadishan, this is Bejoy from, Bejoy from Informist Chair. RBI has responded to us that we have a letter from RBI and they say that your proposal under consideration. So we have to wait till RBI decides on the SLR CRR. We have no we don't have any calculation. So if you really look at the balance sheet of HTFC Limited, I think they have a rough, roughly about it depends on time to time. I mean the last uh, reported number was about four point four lakh crores Keki of liabilities, you know, including borrowings um, and embedded in that particular borrowing, they had some infrastructure bonds of about 80,000 crores, which is now maybe at that point in time, it was 70,000 crores. Net of that, because that doesn't require to qualify for any of the reserve requirements, the approximate, approximate a 22 percent math comes to about anywhere between around 90 to 100,000 crores, okay. Now, when you look at the, uh, the excess that we have beyond, not just beyond regulatory requirements, but even uh, with our comfort level from an asset liability match, we need to keep some cushion both from both institutions. The number probably is already there. You know, if you take 80,000 crores and you take the excesses that we have and the excesses that the institution has, and we probably would be building this from now to the effective date, that is not something that we, sh we are too worried about at this juncture. That's the reason why. See, we, we would this. rather use the money that we have, what Shashi is talking, lending to the economy, lending for mortgages and lending for the bank purposes. And it's more accretive to the society, to the economy, because we have to increase the credit growth. If you want a higher GDP growth rate in India, you have to disperse more money. And uh, if you invest in SLR, CRR is not going to do that to that extent. 
Hi, sir. Uh, Hi, sir. Bijoy, Bijoy from Informist here. Uh, first of all, congratulations for keeping this under the wraps because trust me, not, none of us were able to catch on to it this time. So, good job on this one. You always complain that we, we, we break it before, but good one this time. Uh, separately, sir, um, Keki, sir, how important is it that RBI okays the grandfathering? That has been a contingent issue that has come up every single time. How important is it? that RBI allow for these leeways for the merger to go through. And Shashi sir, so that I can close out my questions. Shashi sir, will there be a ramp up in the level of origination that HDFC Bank does during this transition period of 18 to 24 months or 12 to 18 months as you may look at it? Thank you. So to my mind, the RBI should give us the approval for the bank to hold the investments in HDFC Life, HDFC Asset Management, and uh, the other subsidiaries. The way uh, the similar exemption is given to the other banks which own insurance companies. So we are hopeful and we believe we should be able to get that uh, approval. We would like to increase our stake in HDFC life if possible, uh, subject of course to regulatory approval. So between HDFC and HDFC bank, we can take our stake up from the current level of 47 and a half or 48 or wherever it is to 50% so that it remains a subsidiary of uh, the bank. So, hi, this so, is Shri from Bloomberg News. Shashi, I have a question. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, let me just uh, oh, respond yeah. to the second one. Yes, that will be the endeavor because it's not just from a, uh, not for anything, from a vested interest that there is a need because when, we, when you start listening to the people on the ground, housing loans and home loans is something that all our customers are wanting. Uh, I probably may have said it in the past, but our penetration into the home loan portfolio is extremely small in the bank out of our 68 million customers. And if you look at the, our customer base, there is a large portion of our customers who have actually taken home loans from other banks. When you look at that, the size is equivalent to another HDFC bank. So it gives us a lot of, uh, you know, impetus for us to really focus on penetrating uh, home loans into the our customer base, and hopefully, Mrs. Karnad will be very kind enough to remove any artificial restrictions that she had all this while, and I'm sure she will allow us to ramp up the home loans during this period from today to uh, the effective date. But that's the idea, and that's the thought process. See, on the other side, also, I'd like to say that as of now, only 30% of HDFC's customers have bank account with our bank. So we have to now persuade them to use our bank and use the other services offered by the bank. So it's a two-way street. So, so, uh, so uh, turn, uh, on account of uh, somebody mentioned uh, the uh, capital, though, though are more of liquidity requirements. Please understand two things. There are questions in two broad buckets, which I feel uh, they have been repetitions, are uh, the regulatory liquidity requirements and the investments. Now on investments, there are very clear uh, things that we see as banks like SBI, uh, ICICI, Cota, Axis, so and so forth, uh, do follow certain regulatory prescriptions of holding uh, equities in and controlling equities in certain insurance or AMCs and so on and so forth. And more or less those kind of regulatory prescriptions uh, would follow in with some changes here uh, with respect to grandfathering for which regulator would take decision in due course to ensure that uh, larger number of insurance, if you see there are a lot of insurance reforms that have taken place. Similarly, the same goes for savings to be pushed into uh, equity linked or debt linked instruments. So that's where regulator will take a appropriate call for which already prescriptions today largely exist with margin and deviation. Secondly, the problem on uh, liquidity requirements come for those who don't have capital. These two organizations, please understand, are endowed with substantial capital. They believe in keeping a lot of capital and they keep substantial liquidity reserves on top of it to ensure that rainy day requirements, cyclical requirements are fully met. And as the organizations grow, as I mentioned, that in any case incremental requirement would be met, 
and having you know one nbfc has a particular regulatory regime in it works bank is another one so there is a phasing in requirement for that regulator will take a call and these things keep getting smaller as days go so it's only a guide map towards that is how to be handled and uh, i think rbi and other regulators would be the in the best positions to decide on the guide map as mr parekh had mentioned already they have been intimated of those requirements uh, considering the liquidity requirement it either goes the large capital that the bank has either grows into the credit uh, that is credit growth or goes into the slr where again a rising interest rate doesn't really hit the profitability so i'm not get into those kind of things that's a regulatory call to decide on the growth trajectory of economy as a whole so i think don't worry too much about these things they would be taken care of so uh, uh, sir, 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 i have a question i just want to ask sir, sir. You. I, uh, Shashi, uh, I Vishwanath have a question related to the motivation, the biggest... Uh, hi, uh, hi. Vishwanath uh, from Bloomberg Quint, I just want to ask you, uh, Shashi, uh, considering that the last 18 odd months have, at the bank have gone in a significant tech upgrade and, uh, you know, a lot of management bandwidth has gone away in that, uh, would the next 18 months and then the time after that to complete this integration fully, uh, do you think that for, for the foreseeable future, this, uh, this whole process of the management focusing on, uh, on uh, internal issues, is, is that going to be the future for uh, HDFC Bank, at least for the next three years or so? No, I think uh, over the last uh, 15 months, uh, I think the leadership team, not just at the top, but even many levels below, have really uh, you know, come together and have executed very well, whether it's on the um, on the heightened compliance requirements, on the, the new age technology architecture, in terms of trying to fight the COVID impact. Three years, trying to ensure that we maintain the asset quality despite the fact that a lot of our customers got, did get impacted. And four is continue to grow despite uh, the tumultuous impact that we had on account of COVID. I think we are largely done. It's now a part and parcel of our day-to-day -day life. Now, what, as I think um, uh, the seniors out here had mentioned, the, this particular execution or the, the need for intensity is not going to be as much as probably any other bank-to-bank -bank merger. This is going to be a, a seamless dovetailing of, um, of the company into the larger umbrella of the bank. It's just going to complement our existing product uh, offering. Uh, as uh, he mentioned, we are going to be, uh, the, the, we need people. Human capital is an extremely important one. We are going to be welcoming each one of them into our fold. In fact, we need more uh, if you are going to really ramp up our distribution across all our branches. So in my view, apart from a few uh, uh, hungry battery of uh, legal experts and some of uh, people who can, um, you know, burn the midnight oil. They are the ones who are going to be ensuring that the legality requirements for, for the integration is going to be uh, done. Of course, apart from that, we will have a plan for HR integration, for the uh, system integration, which I believe should not be too much of a tough ask because uh, it's going to be a single monoline product company system. It sh uh, as someone men was mentioning, it's just a lift and move uh, and integrate into the core systems of the bank. So I have, I don't think that's going to be really have a drain on our bandwidth. Uh, we probably have an opportunity for us to focus on ensuring that we step up our distribution of home loan products, as I just mentioned to the earlier uh, uh, question uh, over the next from tomorrow, from now to, uh, or whenever the regulatory requirements, I know I have, uh, our legal person is listening to this very intently. So whenever he approves from that time to the effective date, we will be ramping up our distribution. And it's not going to choke our bandwidth at all. So, so Mr. Uh, just, just seeking a small clarification, sir. You're ruling out the possibility of having to create an NOFHC? It will not, the, uh, the holding company requirement will not arise at all. It's only the bank taking control, absolutely, sir. There is no proposal, the scheme which has been put out, 
does not mention any N FONHC, which is what you are referring to, that is non-functional holding, mm. financial holding company, mm. uh, for which there have been discussions, but that's in the realm of discussions in the regulatory and general informed circles. Uh, this is these two companies coming together, the merger, and subsequently straightening out the holding, which are down below. That okay. is what it is in plain vanilla terms. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, sir, in the last, uh, in the earlier transactions, we've not had the RBI give uh, dispensation or even grandfathering. I'm referring to the IDFC transaction here as far as CLR is, CRR, SLR is concerned. So, uh, what is the plan that HDFC Group has in case the RBI is going to stick to its ground? We'll cross the bridge when we come to it. So we are capital adequate organizations. So that's not an issue. So Mr. Parikh had also referred the capital either goes towards SLR bonds or goes into the credit flow. So as I said, that's not really an issue which is on the table. Uh, let the regulator take a call and not try to sort of uh, judge, prejudge them today. Whatever the call they take, the companies have adequate capital to handle. Uh, Mr. Sash uh, I mean, just Shai, sorry, uh, just just to put that in perspective, the actual capital adequacy of the bank will go higher after this transaction. Mr. Shashidhar, uh, I have a question uh, from Bloomberg, Suvashri here. Uh, just two qu two reasons of the motivation is the key reason the the size for you, the size and scale, the number one and number two, sir. Uh, I heard Mr. Mistry say that uh, the merger will also open up uh, about seven percent of FII uh, investment in the bank. So, is that another because you are the most valued bank in the country uh, in terms of uh, the the market cap? This is you are creating a behemoth, both of both of them together. So, is that also a motivation for the merger? Thank you. The primary motivation is fulfilling the latent demand of housing into our customer base. As I mentioned and I repeat it, our penetrations are very low. We practically are losing our customers to other banks. Now, not just the home loans, but, you know, it's a very sticky product. If the customer is taking a loan from outside, what happens is even the liability, because he has to now pay the EMIs from our account to the other bank, it, it has a double whammy on that. So the primary motivation is that we have an opportunity not just from, a, um, from our, uh, you know, taking the mortgage penetration high, but also it will also help in uh, ensuring that the outflows that happen on account of the library franchise will also be protected. But more than that, they also have 10 million customers, maybe a certain portion of them will be very active the penetration there of our products is very low. So it has another opportunity for us to uh, penetrate. And we have a lot of con the complete suite of uh, ex-mortgage consumer products as well for us to cross-sell there. So that's the primary motive. What you said about the FI holding is just a secondary, um, it's a collateral benefit. It's a collateral benefit which we didn't think of it till our investment bankers told us that this is an additional benefit that it opens up some gap in FII holding. Isaac on the cake, sir. Uh, Mr. Jagadish and Manojit here from Business Standard. Uh, can you throw some light on the board composition of HDFC Bank post the merger? Apart from Mr. Mystery, any other officials will join the board of the bank? Uh, because you have not received RBI approval in recent times to induct uh, fresh board members. No, I will let uh, the seniors talk about this. Uh, the board of the bank already that question, uh, question has been answered. See, the board of a bank, the bank today has a very robust corporate governance structure. It would follow the RBI guidelines regarding the requirement of a fulfillment that our directors must fill with respect to, you know, the kind of uh, expertise and domain knowledge that they need to have. Uh, within the HDFC board, they are extremely capable directors uh, whom, for whom there would be, there is adequate requirement and space in the board of uh, HDFC bank. However, those issues will have to be addressed also in discussion with the regulator and uh, also to see how each of the directors is meeting the requirement both with respect to 
their domain expertise, which exist, as I mentioned, also with respect to age and their uh, previous residency on the bank board itself. Oh, so, it's those a, are yeah. many requirements that they get. It's a premature question because we have not taken a view yet. It's still 15, 18 months away, but we'll take a view nearer the time. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Jagannathan, one more thing. Uh, it SDFC is business bank as usual now. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. One more uh, question, sir. Uh, HDFC Bank to, uh, take huge pride in the fact that they maintain net interest margin at between 4.1 and 4.4 percent for the last 10, 15, 20 years. Post this merger, do you think the margins will uh, squeeze considerably? See, you have to look at the margin in conjunction with the operating costs and the risk, the risk cost or the credit cost. The margin for a book where you have a certain proportion of uh, non-retail assets, that is wholesale assets and retail assets, the margin has always been between 4 and 4.4 percent because we had a kind of, in the DuPont analysis, the operating costs and the credit costs it was in a certain range which could give us a return on assets between 1.8 to 2 percent. Now when you look at it, obviously the margin or the spread on a mortgage book is going to be lower. So the simple arithmetic of that will depress the margin. But along with it, because it is a larger ticket than any of the consumer product that the bank has and the duration is longer, the operating costs on that particular ticket is going to be lower. Plus, you look at the cr track record of the credit costs and housing portfolio, it's much, much smaller than any of the unsecured loans that we have. So when you look at the margins, even though it will be depressed, net of the credit costs, it will still be much better on an apple to apple basis so your what you need to look is the return on assets the risk adjusted return on assets that will be if at all stable if or it could even expand since you oh. have adrs is there any requirement for uh, approval from uh, us authorities no we have examined the the, the battery of uh, legal experts who probably may be here as well i think have examined this particular subject I don't think there is any requirement of any regulatory approvals from SEC. And if you go back in time, I think the bank, which files its 20F on an annual basis, have already put this in the risk factors, saying that they could, if there is a potential merger, these are the implications. So from an investor perspective and from a regulatory perspective, in the United States, I think the disclosures are adequate. Hi, sir. This is Amol here from last ETBFSI. Question, last question. Uh, hi, sir. This is Amol here from ETBFSI. My question is specifically about the cross-selling, which you mentioned that the cross-selling will be an added factor for the combined entity. Uh, could you please tell us how much is your cross-selling business right now and by what percentage it will grow because you have a large number of employees, large number of branches going ahead? I don't think we can answer that question because we don't have the numbers. As I mentioned, 30% or only 30% of our customers we know have a bank account with HDFC Bank. 70% of home loan borrowers have uh, bank accounts with other banks. So we have to lure them to come back to uh, come to HDFC Bank. Similarly, there are HDFC Bank customers who have gone for their housing loans to other banks. We have to try and synchronize our operations and try and capture the market as the years go on. So it's difficult to give a percentage of cross-selling, but HDFC Bank is a distributor, is a large distributor of live products, is a distributor of a mutual fund product, and it gives us loans, housing loans also, about 25% of our loans come from the sourcing of the bank. So a as a distributor, the bank with its numerous branches is a good source. Now, how much cross-selling, exact numbers and all, we don't know. Sir, sir, uh, sir, this is, sir, I have a question, question for. Question. Sir, this is, this is Sandeep Singh from the Indian Express. Uh, sir, you have a, a very sizable and uh, profitable uh, developer finance business. HDFC has a pro developer finance business. Now, that won't be available as a bank. So, how will that be treated in the existing books? And uh, how do you see, uh, will that impact the business going forward in, in the profitability sense? The bank, there's nothing which prohibits a bank from uh, doing construction finance. 
In fact, one of the ways of increasing the retail business, the individual housing finance business, is to give construction finance loans where the product, the housing loan product can be uh, targeted or can be uh, explained to the people who are buying those apartments. So I'm sure it is a product the bank would be interested in. Uh, uh, sir, I have a question for sir. Mr. Shashi. This is Gopika from Mint, uh, right at the back. Uh, so you, um, I mean, it said that this gives space, the deal gives space to underwrite large ticket loans, including infrastructure loans. So what is your plan with regards to um, infra lending? How big do you want to go? How much of the book are you looking at? Uh, considering you have been a late entrant into the space, so uh, what kind of opportunity or how aggressive do you want to get into? No, we have, number one is we have, uh, it's not that we are not doing infrastructure lending. I think today when you really look at it over the last ten years, I think the bank has uh, exper uh, between our coverage team, which is the corporate banking team and the investment banking team, they have sort of um, learned how to assess term projects, infrastructure projects in a manner that today we are one of the largest or maybe the second largest distributor of uh, uh, syndicated loans and debt, debt uh, products. So this particular enhanced capital will only allow us to sort of give larger ticket loans. So we have the expertise, we have a wonderful coverage from the corporate side and investment banking side in terms of doing these kind of products. We have never said no to this. Uh, we have done even, uh, and it's, if you look at the kind of uh, duration of our corporate assets, there are now term finance assets as well. But the rating of these assets are something that we are extremely proud of. It's, uh, we pick and choose some of these things which, um, where we are extremely comfortable from a credit perspective. And now if the infrastructure uh, opportunity is going to be enhanced, I think we will for sure, uh, you know, have an opportunity to do even larger ticket because we have a better appetite now. You know, uh, we've, we've started at 6.30 in the morning, so we're all hungry. We have our board of directors and advisors. So I think you can, uh, we've answered most of the questions you've said. So I think let's break for lunch and please join us for lunch. कितना वक्त लग जाएगा इसके बाद और सर उसके बाद आपका क्या रोल रहेगा क्योंकि अब आप बैंक में तो नहीं रहेगा टाइम लगेगा रेगुलेटरी अप्रूवल सही है काफी रेगुलेटरी अप्रूवल सही है बारह पंद्रह महीना तो लग जाएगा पंद्रह महीना तो लग जाएगा सब रेगुलेटरी अप्रूवल जी सर आपने कहा था कि इसका जो सबसे बड़ा फायदा होगा वो दोनों के कंज्यूमर्स को होगा और जो शेयर होल्डर्स होंगे उन उनको इस डील को किस तरीके से देखना चाहिए जो कंज्यूमर्स हैं और शेयर होल्डर्स दोनों नहीं कंज्यूमर्स को तो फायदा होगा बिकॉज अभी हम एक जगह पे सब प्रोडक्ट्स दे सकते हैं हम पहले एक प्रोडक्ट का कम किया है कोई हमारे पास आता है हाउसिंग लोन के लिए छः साल भर दिया है पीछे उसको गाड़ी के लिए लोन चाहिए हम नहीं दे सकते बैंक में जाना पड़ता है अभी एक रूप के अंदर हम सब लोन दे सकते हैं कंज्यूमर्स को सो इट्स अ सीमलेस ऑपरेशन अर्लियर हमारा एक प्रोडक्ट का कंपनी था अभी हम जा, अभी अभी जो बैंक बन जाएगी तो इट्स अ लॉजिकल एक्सटेंशन बैंक ही होना चाहिए ये स्केल हमारा बहुत बढ़ गया है और आर बी आई के इंटरनल वर्किंग रिपोर्ट में भी आ, कहा है कि लार्ज एन बी एफ सी शुड बिकम बैंक कमर्शल बैंक हमारे पास एक बैंकिंग लाइसेंस था तभी हम हम हमने सोचा कि हम हमारे बैंक से एक मर्ज कर दें सर और एक आखिरी सवाल म्यूचुअल फंड बिजनेस को लेके और इंश्योरेंस बिजनेस को लेके क्योंकि काफ़ी सारे रेगुलेटरी चेंजेस वहाँ हो रहे हैं होल्डिंग रह सकती है नहीं रह सकती है इस पर डिबेट है तो आपका क्या व्यू है बोर्ड का क्या व्यू है इसको लेकर अभी एच बैंक डिस्ट्रीब्यूट कर रही है इंश्योरेंस प्रोडक्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूट कर रहे हैं काफ़ी बाहर के भी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स हैं एच डी एफ सी लिमिटेड भी जो कोई हाउसिंग लोन के लिए आता है हम उसे भी कहते हैं कि इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसी खरीद ले आपके लिए अच्छा है फैमिली के अच्छा है फैमिली फैमिली के लिए अच्छा होगा सो so ये हम इंश्योरेंस का बहुत काफ़ी स्कोप है 
आज इंडिया में इंश्योरेंस पेनिट्रेशन बहुत कम है लाइफ इंश्योरेंस पेनिट्रेशन बहुत कम है अभी कोरोना वायरस के लिए हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस का सडनली एकदम ग्रोथ हो गया है हमने हमारे एक इंश्योरेंस कंपनी में एक हेल्थ कंपनी भी खरीदी थी और मर्ज कर दी है हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस का स्कोप बहुत है लाइफ इंश्योरेंस का भी स्कोप काफ़ी है तो दीपक साहब मेरा एक सवाल रेगुलेटरी कंसर्न्स के तहत सी और एस को लेकर हमने आर को लिखा तो है और हमारी उम्मीद जो है कि बात बन जाए पर अगर नहीं बनती तो ऑल्टरनेट ऑप्शन यहाँ पे क्या रहेगा देखना पड़ेगा वी खान प्री एम तो आर ने रिक्वेस्ट किया है आर देख रहे हैं आर ने चिट्ठी एक फर्स्ट अप्रैल को चिट्ठी लिखी है हमें कि योर प्रपोजल इज अंडर इवेल्यूएशन वी आर रिव्यूइंग इट तो होपफुली पंद्रह दिन में कुछ मिलेगा तब बात कर सकते हैं थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर